What is Aboriginal art? Aboriginal art is the art of the indigenous people of Australia, whose artistic traditions continue to thrive to this day. Aboriginal art includes rock art, body art, bark paintings, fiber arts, and portable sculptures. Aboriginal people are traditionally nomadic. Aboriginal peoples have lived in Australia for the last 40,000 years and their art is closely connected to their religious beliefs and complex mythology. The Aboriginal spiritual world is called Jakarpa, which is usually translated into English as the dreaming or the dream time, and emphasizes the connection between spiritual powers and place. It is important to note that Aboriginal artists are not creating anything new or original, but are reinterpreting designs and artistic elements that have been passed down by spirit ancestors. Many contemporary Aboriginal artists now use acrylic paint to create traditional dot paintings or bark paintings. The work of 20th century Aboriginal artist Clifford Possum Tijapal Jari, 1932-2002 helped bring Aboriginal art to the attention of the international art world and it is now part of major museum and gallery collections around the globe. What makes the Mona Lisa such a great work of art? Her face is everywhere, from backpacks to refrigerator magnets. She occasionally sports a mustache and glasses, and her head has even been replaced by Bart Simpson's. But make no mistake, Thousands of people a year crowd around the real thing hanging in the Louvre in Paris. What is sound art? Also known as audio art, sound art developed in the late 1970s. Though artists and musicians had been experimenting with sound and electronic music for decades prior. Sound art, like video art, is a medium rather than a style. And features many different types of sounds from natural to man-made. The Italian artist Luigi Russolo, 1883-1947, wrote a manifesto titled The Art of Noises in 1913. Using new musical instruments as well as music comprised of noise sounds. Also in 1913, Dada artist Marcel Duchamp created the Aratum musical and later. Eve Klein wrote the Monotone Symphony, 1947, which was composed of only one note. There are a number of sound artists, and visual artists who incorporate sound, working today. Including the British artist Brian Eno, 1948, who collaborated with the artist Peter Schmidt. To create an artwork called Oblique Strategies, Over 100 Worthwhile Dilemmas, 1975. Oblique Strategies is a set of cards designed to assist in solving difficult dilemmas that arise during life and creative work, such as writing a musical composition. Sound art is still in its infancy. 
and new audio and digital technology continues to develop and impact the medium. What are the main characteristics of Gothic architecture? Gothic architecture developed as a major European style in France in the middle of the 12th century and is characterized by the use of pointed arches, ribbed vaults, and flying buttresses. These structural forms allowed medieval masons to achieve never-before-seen heights and much thinner walls than seen in Romanesque churches, as well as the addition of huge stained glass windows, such as the rose window at Chartres Cathedral in France. Gothic architecture was enormously popular in Europe, especially in France. Until the end of the 15th century, and even into the 16th century in some countries. Though it was never particularly popular in Italy, which preferred the Romanesque style. What is a drawing? Drawing is a form of graphic art often done in pencil, charcoal, crayon, or ink on paper. Usually, drawings are black and white and feature images composed of lines, however. The definition of a drawing is fairly flexible and has changed a great deal over time. During the early Renaissance, drawings were associated with the fragile media they were made on and were not considered completed works of art. Drawings were used as preparatory sketches and a way for an artist to share ideas with a patron. It wasn't until the later Renaissance that drawings started to stand on their own as works of art. What is the portrait of Lord Packle? Lord Packle was a powerful Mayan ruler from the ancient city of Palenque. In modern day Chiapas in Mexico, between 615 and 683 c. Lord Packle and his descendants commissioned a great deal of monumental art and architecture in this Mayan capital. At his death, Lord Packle was laid to rest in a sarcophagus. In his tomb archaeologists found a portrait of the ruler as a young man with a crown of jade and flowers. He is thought to be represented according to Mayan ideals of beauty, which emphasize a long, sloping face and skull, and full lips. Traces of red paint indicate that the piece used to be painted, as was most Mayan sculpture. What was the Great Bath at Mohenjo-daro? Mohenjo-daro was an Indus Valley city constructed on a grid plan and made of sun-baked brick. Featuring extensive drainage and plumbing systems. There are records of private bathing areas. Toilets and hundreds of wells in the city some of the earliest known in the ancient world. The Great Bath was a large, watertight pool built near a citadel and was 39 feet long, 23 feet wide, and 8 feet deep. 
the great baths likely served not only a recreational purpose, but also might have been a place for religious rituals. What are the colossal heads of the Almec? Often considered to be the mother culture of Mesoamerica, the Almecs flourished between 1200 to 600 B. CE in present day Mexico. The Almec society left behind no written language. But their monumental art indicates that the culture was highly stratified, with clearly defined social classes. The colossal heads found at San Lorenzo in Veracruz are one of the most recognizable monumental art forms in the Americas. Made of basalt, the colossal heads weigh between 5 and 20 tons each. Up to 8 feet tall, the heavy featured sculptures have broad noses and thick lips. The heads wear helmets with ear flaps and straps under the chin. Scholars believe they represent rulers or historic figures important to the Almec culture. Who was Zerberan? Like Velázquez, Francisco de Zerberan, 1598-1664, was influenced by Caravaggio and is known for his powerful paintings of saints and martyrs, as well as his highly realistic still lives. One of Zerberan's most powerful paintings is Saint Serapion, 1628 which depicts the deceased saint after he sacrificed himself in exchange for captives held by the Moors. Against an inky black background, the saint's body is illuminated, leaning forward against his restraints. Powerful light reflects off of his long white robes, which look incredibly real. A similar contrast of light and dark is evident in another painting Agnes Dei, C. 1635 1640, in which a white lamb dominates the picture plane, its feet tied in a suggestion of sacrifice. The simplicity of Zur Baron's images belies moving spiritual connotations and profound visual impact. Who was Emperor Justinian? Emperor Justinian was one of the most powerful and important rulers of the early Byzantine Empire and was responsible for large-scale building projects. Centered in the city of Constantinople, and in Byzantine territories in Italy. The Church of San Vital in Ravenna, on the eastern coast of Italy, contains large mosaics dedicated to Justinian. Completed around 547 CE and placed in a central location in the church, Emperor Justinian and his attendants is one of the most impressive Byzantine mosaic from the period and features realistically modeled figures composed against a golden background and framed within an abstract, geometric pattern of glass tile. The haloed figure of Justinian is in the center, flanked by his ecclesiastical personnel on his left, and both civil and military personnel on his right. 
The soldiers are grouped behind a large shield decorated with the Greek letters XP. Representing Christ The church officials on his right hold a jeweled cross and a gospel book. Wearing long purple robes that indicate his power, and visually align him with images of Christ. Justinian wears ornate crown jewels and carries a vessel containing bread for the mass held in the church. Against the glittering gold background. It is as if the emperor and his attendants hover in a detached, spiritual realm. Emperor Justinian is clearly in charge of this far-flung Byzantine outpost. Even if he never actually visited Ravenna during his lifetime. What is architecture? Famed modern architect Ludwig Mies van der Rohe stated. Architecture starts when you carefully put two bricks together. Architecture is the art, or science, of designing buildings. And the study of architecture is the study of the built environment. Examples of architecture can range from the small, such as a craftsman-style bungalow in California. To the very big, like the 108-story Willis Tower in Chicago. Architecture can also be very old. For example, Scarabray, a Neolithic fishing village in northern Scotland, is thousands of years old. Whereas the undulating metal of Frank Gehry's Disney Concert Hall was finished in 2003, there are many different architectural styles and building systems throughout history, and throughout the globe. The study of architecture is an important part of art history. Who was Eugene Delacroix? Eugene Delacroix, 1798-1863 Was not interested in the defined forms and classical stoicism promoted by the Academy. This French Romantic painter is known for his use of thick brush strokes, and sweeping. Dramatic scenes inspired by mythology, current events, and his trips to North Africa. Delacroix's massacre at Chios, 1822-1824, was based on the Greek struggle for independence from the Ottoman Empire. An event that influenced many Romantic writers and artists. The painting communicates sympathy for the exhausted Greeks by focusing on the details of individual faces. A menacing Turk dominates the scene as his dark horses rears up over the group of victims. Similarly, Delacroix's Liberty Leading the People, July 28, 1830, 1830, makes heroes of unlikely revolutionaries who passionately take up arms as their brethren have fallen, ready to overthrow the monarchy. Red, white, and blue the colors of the French flag draw attention to the female personification of liberty. Whose bare breast recalls classic sculpture, as she emerges from the dust and smoke. She holds up the French flag in one hand and a bayonet in the other leading the revolutionaries into battle. This romantic painting emphasizes idealism and heroism in its depiction of an important historical event.
What are Hanuwa? Hanuwa are figurative funerary markers made during the Kofun period in Japan, 300 to 710 C. E. Developing over time from simple, cylindrical forms. These unglazed, clay works reflect a Japanese taste for simple, organic design. Never perfectly symmetrical, Hanuwa are purposefully irregular. Though their exact function is unknown. Hanuwa may serve to connect the world of the dead with the world of the living. What was the first Gothic cathedral? The very first Gothic cathedral was the Abbey Church of St. Denis built near Paris in the 1130s under the direction of Abbot Sugur, who wrote about the design and construction of the cathedral in three books. The plan was to reconstruct the old Benedictine monastery that housed the holy remains of St. Denis. Abbot Sugar searched Europe for innovative sculptors and masons who experimented with rib vaults and created decorative sculpture. The result was a unified space filled with light and it served as an inspiration for new religious architecture for centuries afterward. What is the difference between the work of Hokusai and Hiroshigi? Katsushika Hokusai, 1760-1849, and Yudagawa Hiroshige, 1797-1858, were two of the most successful landscape painters in 19th century Japan and their prints are among the most recognizable examples of graphic art in the world. Both artists explored the transience of the material world in their ukiyo-e paintings. Hokusai was especially well known for his series, 36 Views of Mount Fuji. His print The Great Wave off Kanagawa represents a monumental wave cresting with stylized foam about to crash near a group of men in long, graceful boats shaped to mirror the curves of the ocean swells. Appearing unexpectedly in the background is the distant image of snow-capped Mount Fuji, which lies low along the horizon line. The white peak of Mount Fuji looks similar to a white-capped swell in the foreground making the formidable mountain appear as temporary as an ocean wave. The Great Wave is an example of Hokusai's use of the European color, Prussian blue, and demonstrates the simplicity and dynamism of Japanese art during the Edo period. Like Hokusai, Hiroshige was a master of the Edo period who specialized in landscapes. Some of his prints also include images of Mount Fuji, including view of Mount Fuji from Sata Point in the Suriga Bay. 1589, a woodcut that depicts a curling wave similar to the one painted by Hokusai. Hiroshige was almost 40 years younger than Hokusai, and was greatly inspired by the older artist's work. Among his most famous works were his prints for the series. 100 Views of Edo, 1856-1859, which were completed by his student, Hiroshige II. 
his prints often rely on an understanding of perspective to create depth and his style had a major impact on Dutch artist Vincent van Gogh, who created an oil painting based on a hashi bridge. In the rain in 1887, Hiroshige street scenes in prints such as Night View of Sarawakamaki, 1856. Also inspired Impressionist artists such as Auguste Renoir and Camille Pissarro. Hiroshige was working in Japan at a time when the country was opening its doors. To the outside world after centuries of isolation. And his work captures the changes occurring in the 19th century through a lens of the ukiyo-e tradition. What is the arts and crafts movement? The arts and crafts movement, which lasted from 1860 to 1910, was championed by a loose group of artists. Designers, writers, and architects with both aesthetic and social concerns. It developed first in Britain, and then in the United States, where it is called the American Craftsman style. Inspired by the ideas of art critic John Ruskin, its supporters believed that industrialization resulted in the diminished quality of decorative objects. And that this was at least partly to blame for social problems of the era. One of the leaders of the arts and crafts movement, William Morris, 1834-1896, also believed that beautiful art should be available to everyone, and that the status of decorative arts should be raised. To the status of paintings and sculptures, traditionally considered to be examples of fine art. Other artists associated with the arts and crafts movement include Gustav Stickley, 1858-1942, an American designer and furniture maker known for his geometric simplicity, along with Charles Rennie Mackintosh, 1868-1928, a Scottish designer and architect also associated with Art Nouveau. Arts and crafts architects included Philip Webb, 1831 to 1913, Charles Voisy, 1857-1941, and Frank Lloyd Wright, 1867 to 1959, who is associated with the Prairie School. An American offshoot of the arts and crafts movement based in Chicago. What does Jane art look like? Jainism is an important religion in India, in addition to Hinduism. Though only a small percentage of Indians are Jainists. Jainists believe in the cycle of death and rebirth, called samsara, and attempt to live pure. Ascetic lives by looking inwards, avoiding material possessions, and acting kindly to others. At first glance, it may be difficult to distinguish Jain art from Buddhist and Hindu art. But one of the key types of Jain art is monumental nudes of meditating warriors, known as Jinas. The ascetic Gamata in Karnataka, India, is an example of this. At around 60 feet tall, this 10th century, colossal sculpture represents Gamata, who was famous for meditating for years without stopping. 
the figure of Gamata stands at attention with poised shoulders, confident chin, and stoic face. The sculpture's nudity, along with images of tree branches and creepers that curl around his limbs, are meant to emphasize the genus' focus on spiritual, rather than material needs. Sculpture such as the, the ascetic Gamata is used to aid Jainists in their own meditations. What are important symbols in Jewish iconography? Though idols are forbidden in the Jewish tradition, some images are frequently repeated. Especially in the decoration of synagogues and the Jewish holy book, the Torah. Scenes from Jewish history, including the story of Moses, were common choices for synagogues, and can be seen in the decoration of Dura Europo. Important Jewish symbols include the following, Menorah A Sacred Seven-branched candelabrum shofar A ram's horn used like a trumpet during ceremonies Atrog citrus fruit used to celebrate Sukkot A harvest festival Lulave palm branch also associated with Sukkot in a 6th century synagogue located in ancient Manois In modern-day Israel, the floors are decorated with Roman-style mosaics, which feature the traditional Jewish symbols mentioned above, along with stylized birds, plants, and animals, which are thought to represent Earth's bounty and the unity of the Jewish people. What was the Aztec religion? The Aztec religion was influenced by the beliefs and mythologies of other Mesoamerican cultures such as the Almec, Maya, Teotihuacan, and Toltec. As in other Mesoamerican religions, human sacrifice was an important part of the religion and was linked to cycles of birth, death, and rebirth. The Aztec emphasized the importance of the sun as well as over 1,000 powerful yet occasionally fallible deities. Hutzilopochtli was the god of war and the sun who, according to mythology, led the Aztecs to the location where they founded the city of Tenochtitlan. One of the most popular deities was the heroic Quetzalcoatl, who was often depicted in art as a feathered serpent. Religion was an extremely important part of everyday life for the Aztecs. What is the international style? The international style of architecture, sometimes referred to as international modernism, began in France, the Netherlands, and Germany in the 1920s and 1930s. It spread across countries around the globe, but is most associated with Europe and the United States. It lasted until the 1970s as the preeminent modernist mode of building design. The international style was inspired by Cubism, Destigial, and elements of the arts and crafts movement. Architects working within the movement include Walter Gropius, first director of the Bauhaus. Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, L.E.C.O.R. Bizier. 
and sometimes Frank Lloyd Wright, whose later works were inspired by the international style. Buildings such as L.E. Corbusier's Villa Savoy, built in the village of Poissy. Outside of Paris, France, between 1920 and 1931, reflect the international style's emphasis on flat, rectilinear forms, simple decoration, and open interiors. In 1932, an exhibition called Modern Architecture, International Exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in New York helped to promote the international style on a large scale, and gave the movement its name. Practitioners of the movement embraced industrialism and mass-produced materials such as stone, concrete, and glass. The style evolved over the course of the following decades to include monolithic glass-covered skyscrapers such as the Lakeshore Drive Apartments, designed between 1948 and 1951 in Chicago by Van der Roy, and the Seagram Building in New York, 1954-1958, also designed by Van der Roy, with Philip Johnson. What is a historia de capital? An innovative element of Romanesque church decoration. A historiated capital is a space just above a column that illustrates a compressed narrative. Flight into Egypt is a 12th century historiated capital in the French Cathedral of Saint Lazare. Attributed to the sculptor Master Gisli Bertuz. The scene depicts the Madonna and child riding a donkey. Led by Saint Joseph. Mary looks straight ahead while St. Joseph leans forward his body conforming to the trapezoidal shape of the capital. More than mere decoration. This historiated capital serves to educate by representing symbolic stories 94 from the Bible. What was Dura Europo? Dura Europo was an ancient trading town established in the 3rd century B.C.E. and abandoned by 256 C.E. in modern-day Syria. After being long forgotten, the settlement was rediscovered by British soldiers in the early 20th century. The site features Greco-Roman temples dedicated to Greek gods such as Zeus and Artemis as well as temples decorated with images of ancient Near Eastern deities such as the Persian god Mitras, and a variation on the Sumerian moon goddess, Nana. Also found here was one of the earliest known Jewish synagogues and a Christian house church. Both early Christians and early Jews built their churches and synagogues in private houses. The Dura Europo synagogue was large and richly decorated with interior wall paintings. Emphasizing green and yellow color schemes, and featured a niche for Torah scrolls. The house church was built in 246 CE and contained one of the earliest known baptismal fonts. The walls were decorated with images from both the Old and New Testament including an image of Christ walking on water. The Dura Europo site preserves evidence of a rich melting pot of ancient cultures and gives 
scholars' insights into the visual culture of early Jews and Christians of the ancient world. What is the Taj Mahal? The Taj Mahal, in Agra, India, is one of the most recognizable structures around the world. With its white onion-shaped domes, arched windows, and long reflective pool. The Taj Mahal is made of marble, inlaid with colorful stones in a floral pattern. And also decorated with calligraphy inscriptions from the Churan. It is not a palace, but a mausoleum built by the 17th century Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan. Grandson of Akbar the Great, for his third wife, Mumtaz Mahal. Monumental tombs were part of an Islamic tradition and the design. Of the Taj Mahal mirrors the design of garden pavilions in Iran. It evokes a sense of calm and serenity through its symmetrical and balanced forms. And expansive pools and tall minarets. The building is symbolically linked to descriptions of gardens in paradise. From the Quran and is considered a masterpiece of Indo-Islamic architecture. Who was Suzuki Harunobu? Suzuki Harunobu, 1724-1770 Was an innovative Edo printmaker who was the first to produce multicolored prints. He became famous for his Nishiki, brocade. Prince of beautiful courtesans, including Geisha as a Daruma crossing the sea, mid 18th century, which depicts an elegant woman wrapped in a red cloak, staring into the wind as nearby reeds seem to rustle behind her. The print is an example of Haranobu's mastery of color, and of the popularity of not only courtesan scenes but also of theater in ukiyo-e painting, as the woman takes on the persona of the mythological Daruma. During the Edo period, stylized kabuki theater was extremely popular. And pictures like this often depicted popular actors and characters from the stage. Suzuki Harunobu was one of the most commercially successful artists working in Edo. Tokyo, and his multicolored prints helped to popularize the ukiyo-e style. What is the Cliff Palace at Mesa Verde? The Cliff Palace at Mesa Verde in Colorado was built by the Anasazi people who lived in the Four Corners area of the American Southwest for thousands of years and are considered ancestors of the Pueblo people. Before the 14th century, the area was less arid and a slightly cooler than it is now and the Anasazi lived by irrigating the land for farming. They built dwellings in natural cliff alcoves, directly underneath the land they farmed. The dwellings, which are among the most dramatic and best preserved examples of Native American architecture, were designed for special purposes such as food storage and religious ritual. Some of the dwellings have as many as 150 rooms and are essentially cave villages. Another structure, 
Pueblo Benito, was also built by ancestral Pueblo people as early as the 9th century. What is the Palace of Gnosis? The mysterious Minoan culture is famous for the labyrinthine Palace of Gnosis. Discovered on the island of Crete in 1900 by the British archaeologist Sir Arthur Evans. Evans called his discovery the Palace of Minas. Referring to the mythological maze which imprisoned the Minotaur. The Gnosis Palace complex contained hundreds of rooms of various sizes and shapes. Including storerooms, workrooms, and administrative rooms. One storeroom was so large. It could hold over 20,000 gallons of oil in jars. While the layout of the palace appears disjointed and confusing. Each space was designed to have access to fresh air and plumbing, and was elaborately decorated with wall paintings and frescoes. The palace appears to have been completely destroyed and rebuilt. And Minoan culture seems to have been severely disrupted by at least one major natural disaster. Possibly a catastrophic earthquake or volcanic eruption or both. What is Byzantine art? During the 4th century, Roman Emperor Constantine moved the capital of the empire from Rome to Byzantium. In modern-day Turkey, and named the new capital city, not immodestly, Constantinople. After the western portion of the Roman Empire fell in 476 CE, Constantinople became the major art center of this eastern empire, which included areas of Turkey, Greece, Italy, and Eastern Europe, and portions of North Africa. The people of this eastern Roman Empire, or Byzantine Empire, referred to themselves as Romanians and considered themselves the Second Rome. The Empire, and especially the city of Constantinople, was immensely powerful. Surviving longer than any other imperial power except for Egypt. Byzantine art was monumental in scope, richly decorated and influenced by both Eastern and Western traditions. Common forms of Byzantine art include brightly colored mosaics, icon paintings, illuminated manuscripts, and monumental architecture. What is the Caroline script? In the early medieval period, scribes were responsible for hand-copying illuminated manuscripts. And although these scribes were specially trained, penmanship was overall quite poor, and scribes did not follow a specific set of rules when writing. During the Carolingian period, Carolingian is an adjective used to indicate the rule of Charlemagne and his descendants, a new system of writing was developed. Which resulted in much greater consistency from scriptorium to scriptorium. The use of majuscules, or capital letters, was based on the ancient Roman alphabet. 
majuscules were used in titles and headings, and on only the most formal manuscripts. Lowercase letters, or minuscules, were quicker and easier overall, and were used for less formal writing. Who is Bill Viola? Bill Viola, 1951, is a contemporary video and sound artist known for exploring the role of technology in his work and his video and audio. One of his most well-known and emotionally powerful pieces is Heaven and Earth. 1992, a sculptural installation in which two video monitors face one another. One monitor displays a scene of the artist's mother on her deathbed while the other screen plays a scene of his nearly newborn son, juxtaposing the beginning of life with the end. Because of the highly reflective surface of the screens, the death and birth scenes merge into one. Viola's larger installations can create a completely immersive environment. Through video and audio projection making the viewer a part of the art. Viola's 1976 work, He Weeps For You, used video to allow gallery visitors to see and hear, themselves reflected in a water droplet that slowly falls from a brass valve. An image that was magnified on a large screen. What is the Ionic Order? The Ionic Order is the second of the three classical Greek architectural orders and is characterized by a longer, leaner column than the Doric Order. Ionic columns were built with a ratio of approximately 9,1 and the capital at the top of the column is 46 shaped like an unfurling scroll, which is called a volute. The Temple of Athena Nike, located on the Acropolis in Athens and built between 427 and 424 BCE, is an example of an Ionic temple. This small building was only about 27 by 19 feet and it was completely demolished by invading Turks during the 17th century, though it was later rebuilt. The temple is famous for its two porches on each end and for a surviving fragment of relief sculpture known as Athena Nike adjusting her sandal. This elegant image shows the goddess wearing a long flowing robe which clings gently to her body as she bends to adjust her shoe. Her robe slips off of one shoulder and she appears momentarily vulnerable. A delicate and erotic image of the goddess. Who was Eva Hesse? Eva Hesse, 1936-1970 Was a German-American painter and sculptor whose Jewish family dramatically escaped Nazi Germany. Her highly experimental art is usually categorized as minimalist, however. Unlike many minimalists, narrative and personal history are an important part of her work. Her installation sculpture Rope Piece, 1969-1970, a tangled, slightly frightening web of rope, 
string, and wire, has a different form each time it is moved to a new location. The piece has been described as a drawing in space. Her work Accession 2, 1968-1969, now at the Detroit Institute of Art, is a cube made of vinyl and steel. The cube is open at the top, revealing a lush layer of fiber-like tubes a reaction against the severity of much minimalist art. Who was Guan Das Hung? Guan Doisheng was a renowned female calligrapher, painter, and poet working during the Yuan dynasty. She was famous for her paintings of bamboo plants. Bamboo was an important symbol in Chinese art because the plant's branches and leaves are reminiscent of calligraphy. And because bamboo is flexible under pressure it will bend, but not break. Guan Daoshan's hand scroll, 10,000 bamboo poles in cloudy mist. Is the earliest surviving example of work done by a woman in China. In this painting, delicate bamboo leaves are lush and meticulously depicted. While the firm shoots are thought to represent faithfulness and fidelity. What is Chartres Cathedral? Chartres Cathedral is perhaps the preeminent example of Gothic architecture in the world. Construction began in 1134 about 50 miles southwest of Paris. After a fire in 1194, Chartres was under construction until 1260. The cathedral features intricate relief sculptures depicting the Last Judgment over the West Portal, entry doors, monumental stained glass windows, and two mismatched towers, one of which was built in the early 16th century. The figurative sculptures on the exterior of Chartres are so lifelike. They seem to jostle and look to one another in conversation. Upon entering the building, the arcades appear weightless, the walls soaring, thin, and delicate. Warm, colored light filters into the nave through the rows. Window where biblical narratives emanate from rich, glass panes. The aim of the Gothic architects of Chartres and other cities in Europe was to make manifest divine light from heaven. And here, it does appear as if they succeeded. Are those human hands? Yes. Overall, there are not many depictions of humans in Paleolithic art and those images of humans that do exist are not as realistically rendered as images of animals. Floating around the top and bottom of a painting of two spotted horses from the Peck Merle Cave in Dordogne, France, are the outlines of human hands. It is tempting to think that Paleolithic artists were merely playing around making handprints on the wall. But these images were purposefully done. Some of the hands seem to have been made by pressing a painted hand against the cave wall. 
other hand prints were made by using the hand to create negative space. Paleolithic artists used their hands like a stencil and either, essentially. Sponge painted or sprayed pigment with a reed or bone to create the outline. Why are art historians so confused about the Arnolfini portrait? The Arnolfini portrait, completed in 1434 by Jan van Eyck, is both enchanting and enigmatic. A great deal of questions surround the work. The painting depicts a well-dressed couple surrounded by evidence of wealth. Possibly a merchant named Giovanni Arnolfini and his wife, Giovanna Senemi, though new research indicates that these two individuals did not actually marry until over a decade after the portrait was painted adding to the mystery. Perhaps the couple is instead from a different part of the extended Arnolfini family. Like the Marode altarpiece, the painting includes many symbolic objects, some religious and some secular. For example, the dog in the foreground is a symbol of love and loyalty. While the crystal prayer beads in the back of room symbolize the couple's piety. Debate rages on as to whether or not the woman in the portrait is pregnant. As her hand rests on the top of her stomach. But, perhaps the couple only desires a baby? One of the most curious parts of the painting is the mirror on the back wall. Just above this mirror is a note that reads, Jan van Eyck was here. Within the mirror appear the backs of the couple along with the face of an additional figure. Is it Van Eyck himself? Art historians aren't sure. Regardless of the mystery surrounding this painting. It is a masterfully detailed work and serves as a window into another world. What is installation art? The term installation art developed in the 1970s and refers to art designed for a particular space. Usually an indoor space, and is usually temporary. Installation art can incorporate sculpture, video, performance, and mixed media. In a way, installation art conceives of a museum or gallery exhibition space as a work of art in and of itself. And viewer interaction with the space is at the core of the form. Installations often have specific themes and messages and can be designed by a single artist or a group. Artists who have created notable installations include Rachel White Reed, A.I. Weiwei, and Jenny Halzer. The artist Suvan Gear even includes elements of smell in her installation work. For more examples, see the chapter on contemporary art 1960s to present. How did the Bauhaus influence America? Many important German artists, architects, and designers fled the country during the rise of the Nazis and emigrated to America, where they achieved great success. Walter Gropius the founder of the Bauhaus School, left Nazi Germany in 1934 and joined the faculty at 
Harvard University where he founded the Architects Collaborative. A modernist group that emphasized collaboration and created the design for the Clark Art Institute building in Williamstown, Massachusetts. In Chicago, Laszlo Moholinagy directed the new Bauhaus, which lasted until 1938, and later went on to open the School of Design. Which was then incorporated into the Illinois Institute of Technology, IIT. Ludwig Mies van der Rohe was head of IIT's architecture department and designed Crown Hall. A masterpiece of modern architecture. Who invented photography? The process of photography, in which an image is fixed by recording light through chemical and now digital, means, was not invented by a single individual. The concept had been around for thousands of years in the form of the camera obscura. A small, dark box with a tiny hole on one side that allows light to enter. The light reveals an image from outside the box. Which is either reflected onto a surface with a small mirror, or passes through onto a wall. A large-scale camera obscura can even be made in a darkened room. Artists use the camera obscura to view small details in a scene. Scholars hypothesize that Johannes Vermeer and other 18th-century artists may have used such a device to achieve such heightened detail in their work. The problem for artists, however, was to take the image produced by the camera obscura and make it permanent. The first person to do this was Louis Jacques Mondé Daguerre, a painter. Who was Artemisia Gentileschi? Like other Caravagisti, or followers of Caravaggio. The work of female painter Artemisia Gentileschi, 1593 c. 1652, is characterized by dramatic diagonals, naturalism. Chiaroscuro, contrasts of dark and light, and powerful subject matter. She was arguably the most successful female artist of her day. She worked for the Duke of Tuscany and was the first female member of the Florentine Academy of Design. She is known for her paintings of the Old Testament story of Judith beheading Holofernes. A popular scene in the 16th and 17th centuries. And often analyzed in relation to a rape she suffered at the hands of her tutor when she was 17 years old. Male or female, Artemisia Gentileschi was one of the most skilled naturalist painters of the Baroque period. How did Giotto become so famous? Giotto was a 13th century celebrity. Discovered by master artist Simabu drawing sheep while tending to his flock. As the story goes, he eventually achieved star power not seen by any artist before him. He was written about by Giorgio Vasari, discussed at length by the artist writer, 
Senino Senini. And mentioned by Leonardo da Vinci as one of the most important artists who came before him. Vasari explained what made Giotto famous, he set art upon the path that may be called the true one. As quoted in Stockstad, Art History, p. 608, Vasari went on to explain that it was Giotto who made the biggest visual breakthroughs in depicting a realistic sense of three-dimensional space in his painting. Giotto's masterpiece is the fresco series he painted inside the Arena Chapel in Padua, Italy. Made for the Scrovengi family and completed around 1305, the frescoes cover the barrel vaulted chapel walls in deep lapis blue and are dotted with stars and discs featuring the portraits of saints. Giotto paints a narrative by dividing the wall up into quadrants, each telling a different part of the story of the life of Christ and the Virgin Mary. Each scene has a sense of depth and the figures are realistically modeled by using dark shades for shadow, and whiter shades for highlights. The largest fresco in the series is The Last Judgment, at the west wall of the chapel. In The Last Judgment, Christ raises his hand in blessing. The saved are grouped on Christ's right side and the damned descend to hell on the left. The patron, Enrico Scrovengi is shown offering his family chapel to Christ in an attempt to cleanse his sins. The Renaissance artist Lorenzo Ghiberti said the Arena Chapel was one of the glories of the earth. Quoted in Art Past Art Present 241 Who was Exequias? Greek vases from the classical period feature some of the most impressive paintings in the ancient world. And Exequias is considered to be one of the greatest vase painters of the time. Living in Athens during the 6th century BCE, Exequias painted in what is known as the black figure style, which places black figures on a red background. His work is noted for its grace and sense of order. One of his most famous pieces depicts Achilles and Ajax playing drafts. From c. 530 BCE, the scene takes place during a break in fighting during the Trojan War when the mythological warriors pause to play a game of ancient checkers. The scene is very symmetrical and the arrangement of figures takes into account the swelling form of the vase itself. Exequias not only painted the vase, but he was also the potter. A signature on the piece reads, Exequias painted me and made me. What is the Sphinx? The Great Sphinx at Giza, c. 2520 to 2494 BCE, is a monumental human headed lion sculpture carved from a natural limestone hill. This 240-foot colossus is thought to represent the old kingdom pharaoh Khafre. Like the Assyrian Lamassu, Egyptians protected gateways with depictions of lions. It was thought that lions never slept and they were associated with the sun. 
in Egypt, as in much of the ancient world. Human-animal hybrids were considered divine and this promoted Kafir's status as a divine ruler. What is a mosque lamp? Mosque lamps are oil lamps, most closely associated with the medieval period. And characterized by a bulbous middle and flared top. Often enameled or made of glass, they are extremely fragile but well cared. For because the light of a mosque lamp was associated with the light of God. Many mosque lamps were commissioned by Mamluk sultans in Egypt during the 13th century and were inscribed with verses from the Quran. What is Tassili and Ajar? Tassili and Ajar is an approximately 7,000 year old in southeastern Algeria with thousands of rock paintings and engravings one of the earliest and most impressive examples of rock art in Africa. During the time when many of the images were made, this section of the Sahara Desert was a grassy plain and the paintings include images of elephants, hippopotami, and giraffes. Later images depict men, women, and children gathered around small houses, cattle grazing nearby. As the Sahara dried over thousands of years, new animals appear in the rock art. Such as camels and horses introduced from nearby Egypt. Who was Grandma Moses? Anna May Moses, better known as Grandma Moses, 1860-1961, didn't begin painting until she was in her 70s. When her arthritis was so bad that she could no longer sew. She is an example of a so-called naive artist. Or a self-taught artist who has not been academically trained. Grandma Moses lived in rural New York, and first had her art displayed in a local drugstore. Where she was discovered by an art collector. Her first solo show, held in 1940, was called What a Farm Wife Painted. Her work, primarily nostalgic landscapes of familiar places such as upstate New York, Vermont, and Virginia, became immensely popular, and has been copied in multiple formats from greeting cards to wallpaper to postage stamps. Among her collection of over 1,000 paintings are the old checkered house. 18th April 1949 and down on the farm in winter, 1945, which are filled with small. Lively figures and provide a nostalgic view of rural America. Why is the tiny Tempietto an important example of high renaissance architecture? The Tempietto is a small, circular church, officially called the Church of San Pietro in Montorio, Rome. It was designed around 1502 by Donato Bramante. 
a famed architect from Urbino who was later hired to design St. Peter's Cathedral. Tempiato means Little temple and its style is reminiscent of an ancient pagan temple. It was built over what is believed to be the site of St. Peter's crucifixion and housed relics associated with the apostle. Bramante's design was very much in tune with classical. Aesthetics popular during the Renaissance, especially in Italy. The architectural elements are mathematically proportioned and the overall style is unified. Making the building almost like a work of sculpture. The simplicity of the exterior, along with the use of classical columns, a dome. And hemispherical entablature, inspired many other building projects in Rome. Though small, the Tempiato is one of the most significant. Examples of High Renaissance Architecture in Italy Why is the Leaning Tower of Pisa well, leaning? The Leaning Tower of Pisa, or Campanile, Italian for Bell Tower, is part of a larger cathedral complex uniformly designed in white marble. The tower, built between 1171 and 1271, started to lean even before construction. Was completed because of the soft ground upon which it was built and because the base was too small for the nearly 180 foot height of the tower. The builders tried to adapt to the lean during construction. And a slight bend is noticeable in the upper floors. This did not work. In the last few decades. Structural engineers have excavated underneath the tower in order to stabilize it. Who was Francisco Goya? Francisco Goya y Lucianes, 1746-1828, was a Spanish Romantic painter who lived to see Napoleon. Bonaparte absorbed Spain into his empire, a violent massacre of the people by the new government. The restoration of the Spanish monarchy, and the reinstitution of the Spanish Inquisition. Goya, who at one time was the court painter for Spanish King Charles IV, and painted a perhaps too realistic, arguably unflattering portrait of the royal family in 1800, was inspired by the Enlightenment ideas of the French Revolution and deeply. Disappointed by the failure of those ideas to instill fundamental change in Spain. Charles IV cracked down hard on social change, even banning the entry of books into the country. Goya series of 80 etchings, Los Caprichos, The Caprices, completed between 1796 and 1798. Respond to what Goya perceived of as the folly of the Spanish people at the time. The Sleep of Reason Produces Monsters, an aquatint etching from the series. Depicts reason personified as a slouched, sleeping figure. While reason is preoccupied by slumber, ominous creatures emerge from the darkness including owls, bats, and a cat with wide, glowing eyes. Goya's work suggests the genius of Velázquez, 
the satire of Hogarth, and the refinement of Reynolds. While illustrating a highly individual and complex imagination steeped in Spanish mysticism and superstition. Other important paintings by Goya include 3rd of May, 1808, 1814 to 1815, which commemorates the massacre of Spanish prisoners by the French. Dark paintings such as Saturn devouring one of his children, 1820 to 1823, and many portraits. <laughs>